So I'm Dan Remick. I'm uh, Chair of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at Boston University. My first memory of shock was talking to Program Officer Lee Van Letten at uh, National Institutes of Health, and he asked me, are you going to the meeting? And I didn't know what meeting he was talking about. Um, so I had to quickly look up exactly what that meeting was. This was in the 1990s. The internet was not as robust as it is now. So I had to call around and ask some of the, some of my mentors, such as Urshad Chaudhary, what is this meeting that everyone's talking about? I quickly found out about the Shock Society meeting, and I've been going to it every single year since I first heard about it. Shock is a unique society because it has both basic science and clinical people in the same room. This happens at some larger meetings, such as experimental biology, but the last experimental biology meeting had 12,000 people. Here we're about 500 people, and you can sit right next to someone who's literally world-renowned and ask them questions. That can't happen in a meeting with 12,000 people. There's also a very friendly atmosphere, so people get along quite well. We still push each other. We still ask tough scientific questions, but it tends to be done in a non-belittling uh, manner, so that you're asking about what's going on as opposed to, I know more than you, and so I want to go and prove that I, that I know more than you. Uh, and that makes for a very collaborative kind of atmosphere. When I was president, we were in the process of trying to make decisions about our travel awards, and the specific issue was that um, we wanted to potentially name the travel awards after former presidents. Now the Shock Society has been around for 40 years. Eventually there would be more dead presidents than there are Shock Society, Shock Society travel awards. So we had to come up with a way to honor the prior presidents but not have it go on in perpetuity. So we came to a compromise where uh, if someone would nominate a, uh, a former president, they needed to have passed on, so they need to be a dead president, needed two Shock Society members to nominate that person to be a, a named presidential award, and it only lasts for 25 years. And the idea was that if we went for 25 years, we have more than 25 presidential awards, that they would expire when people no longer remembered who those presidents were, so they'd sort of, the names would constantly renew. This was actually a little controversial. It took about two years to kind of come up with this compromise, um, but I think it's worked out quite well. And if you look this year, we have six named presidential awards. So in other words, we've taken some of our travel awards. They're named for former presidents. Shock has been tremendous for my career. We are one of the few societies where there's a close linkage between the study section members and the society members so that you have an opportunity to both serve on study section and serve on shock. So when your grants are going up for re to be reviewed, um, you don't have a necessarily a leg up, but you understand how the, sh how the re NIH review process works. So when you're at the annual meeting, you of course would not ask the reviewer, what, is, what did you like about my grant? Or, who said bad things about my grant? But you can go and, and ask, say, so I got this you know, back, what do I do next? And you can have someone who's experienced at, at doing that. So that's one, one of the good things about, about shock. One of the other things that's good, we've already talked about a little bit, and that is the collaborative nature. So you can ask people for help. People are very responsive. So just at this meeting, I've been trying to work out something scientifically, uh, and there's a junior member who had a poster who, ha who had the exact answer to the question I was trying to do, a, a, a technique. He gave me his card, said, send me an email. I will send you my protocol. It's very easy to do. He literally saved me three months' worth of work. So probably the hardest thing was trying to figure out how to name the travel awards and still go and have it um, be something that could continue and not just have it happen one time. Because there were people that wanted to go and name a travel award after someone and just go and have that go on in perpetuity, which is a nice honorific, but in say 15, 20 years, no one will remember that former president and what she or he did. So this way, uh, with having a time limited for the award for 25 years, it allows, allows it to renew. That was one of the difficult decisions. The other one that I helped participate in was changing who was going to be the management society. So the time had come to renew the contract for who was going to manage our society. Um, Chuck Lang did a great job of 
basically surveying who is out there, getting uh, requests for bids uh, to open it up for a competitive process, but deciding to go and sever ties with our uh, former management group with whom we had worked for a long time was actually a difficult decision. Wasn't mine directly, but I did participate in that. There are so many humorous things that have happened over the years, uh, and that's one of the things that actually makes the society special. So one of the things uh, is sometimes we have the fun runs, things uh, happen at the fun runs, but we've had two rafting trips. And I remember on the one rafting trip, there's a protocol where if someone falls out of the raft, you wave the paddle. And that indicates that someone fell out of the raft, and so then the, the trailing raft would pick them up. So two people fell out of the raft, and they waved the paddle, and they only picked up one of the people. So there was someone who was actually, this is maybe not funny, uh, but it, had a, it has a good ending. So there were two people that fell out of the raft. They picked up one, but didn't pick up the second one, and all the rafts flew past him, and the water was very cold and moving very quickly. So they're going, you know, these rafts are roaring down, down the river. There's some guy still stuck in the water, uh, and his wife is starting to holler at the raft guides. My husband is still there. He said, no, no, we picked him up. He said, no, that's not my husband. He's still in the water. So this guy got to the side of the river, climbed out of the water, and as he tells the story, he's crawling up the side of the bank of the river, you know, literally over the bones of dead animals, uh, and, and gets to where there's a road, and is starting to walk down river, you know, assuming that eventually he'll pick up. So the rafts pull over, and one of the guides got out and then started jogging back to try to find this guy, hopefully find him alive. Uh, they found him, they picked him up, and then brought him back home. One of the things that's, being, that's nice about being the president of Shock is the support that you get from other members of council. So you're not just working by yourself. There's a group of people with whom you're working, uh, and they all have, in general, the same idea, that they want to make the society stronger, they want to do better science, and so they're not just trying to, I am more important, I want more, more grants, so they're working together. So it made it easier to work on council because you had the support of people who also had your same goals in mind.